Next up, uh, Clark O'Vision. Um, Bev, thanks for uh, uh, thanks for choosing a number. Um, so um, Clark O'Vision doesn't do videos yet, but um, I I think she should. So um, get onto her and, and get her to get in front of the camera and start showing us uh, some music. Um, you chose number eighty-seven, and that is uh, some Guns and Roses. Uh, it's uh, the uh, Lies EP. Um, so this is a combination of two EPs. I think we've got uh, Love Like a Suicide from 1986, or Live Like a Suicide, sorry. And um, Lies on uh, this side. My favorite track on here is probably uh, used to, to lover. There's a obviously um, one in a million is a fairly controversial uh, song, and if you um, if you Google that, you can see probably Axl Rose trying to uh, justify why he wrote the lyrics as he uh, as he did. Uh, I'm not going to comment too much more on it. It's uh, for everyone to decide whether they feel it is uh, worthy of its uh, notoriety. Um, in a sleeve, obviously, uh, live like a suicide picture of the band, and uh, whoops, there we go. This is the first edition uncensored version. Um, there we go. That and this is just on the Geffen label. I've never noticed that before. It says uh, Uzi Suicide. I'm uh, not quite sure what that relates to, but I'm sure uh, someone will tell me. Um, but yeah, I used, to, I used to play that a lot when I was younger. I don't, I don't play it so much now. In fact, I couldn't remember what any of the tracks on Live Like a Suicide actually sounded like until I um, played it uh, a few days back. Um, but that's to say, well, that's one of my original from my 80s collection, so it, it'll stay in the collection. I'll, I'll never get rid of those ones. Uh, I'll come to think of it, I never get rid of any albums anyway. Um, moving on. Uh, so thank you, Clark and Vision, for, uh, for doing that. Um, picking a number. Um, Dude, 1973. Chris, you chose uh, number 88, and that is Aerosmith and Pump. Uh, always love that cover. It's just kind of outrageously Aerosmith. Um, tenth studio album. And they obviously um, wrote, recorded, and released this following the, uh, the permanent vacation uh, high that they were on. Can't really go with uh, go wrong with with Aerosmith. Um, F.I.N.E. Fine is probably my uh, favourite track of this album. Um, again, this is one of my original 80s uh, albums. Which does that go that way? That way? Sure. Okay, uh, picture of uh, the band. Although interesting, I've only, only just noticed that the uh, there's a, uh, not the photographer, I was going to say the photographer's in the shot, but uh, not quite sure how he would have got himself in there. Um, yeah. I've not, uh, I showed a, an Aerosmith album in the last one, I've not looked to see if there's any whale noises on this one, but I'm pretty sure there isn't this time around. Um, so thank you, uh, Chris, Doom1973, for choosing that number. Um, and I, I realise I'm going through these fairly um, quickly, so... I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I usually like the ramble that I normally go on about, but uh, there we go. Number 91, Metal Mickey, uh, Mike. Megadeth, so far, so good, so what? 1988, Capitol Records, an absolute uh, classic, third studio album uh, by the band in a very angry album at that as well 
Um, the only album that features uh, Chuck uh, Baylor and uh, Jeff Young. Uh, I think they both got uh, fired uh, after a subsequent uh, tour. Um, Anarchy in the UK, awful. Um, a little bit more on that later, as you'll see. Um, yeah, I just don't think the the change up in the, in the lyrics made any sense, and I've never particularly liked the um, the Megadeth uh, covers that they put on the first few albums, certainly at least. Um, but the rest of the tracks, you know, can't really fault. Um, in fact, I think um, side two on here is probably one of the finest uh, second sides of um, thrash and metal there's ever been. I love every song on there. 502, In My Darkest Hour, Liar, and uh, Hooking Mouth. I did have to look up what uh, 502 meant because uh, I didn't have a clue, and apparently it's a, uh, a code that was used in LA County when this song was written, and it uh, designates a, a DUI um, driving while intoxicated, driving under influence. So there we go, that's a great song. I think you got that one. Um, sentimentally, this is my favorite Megadeth album as it was my introduction to them. Uh, I didn't have a lot of their albums in the 80s. I was fairly... Uh, uh, I've discovered most of their uh, earlier stuff and uh, later stuff uh, in the last uh, few years. Uh, now I'm not quite sure what is my favourite album, um, but um, I'm enjoying getting more and more uh, familiar uh, with the earlier stuff and the uh, the 90s and the noughties uh, stuff as well. So. Um, but you can't go wrong with Megadeth. They are now one of my uh, favourite bands. In fact, I'll put them way above Metall Metallica. Uh, now, all these years later, maybe not in the 80s, but certainly uh, now, um, across the whole catalogue. Um, yeah. Then let's leave. Band photo and uh, lyrics. Um, the rainbow. Capital logo. There we go. Uh, thanks, uh, Mike. Um, bad English Rex. <clears throat> I think this is your first pick. I don't think you've done one before, but you picked uh, number 132. And that's uh, another Stone Cold classic. Iron Maiden. Uh, Power Slave. Um, fifth studio album. Um, it's 51 minutes 20 long. So I this was a albums like this used to really annoy me in the 80s because I didn't have this on vinyl. Um, I needed to uh, create my own copy on tape, and of course it doesn't fit on the side of a C90. Um, but there we go. Uh, Ace is high. Two minutes to midnight. Uh, Back in the Village, Power Slave, Rhyme the Ancient Mariner. It's just a brilliant album. I've got a uh, Iron Maiden uh, album ranking video in the works where I'm trying to put the different uh, twist on the usual formula. So I'll go into a bit more detail about what I like on this uh, at that time. But uh, as it involves listening to all 16 albums, it's, uh, it's going to be a little way away yet. Uh, we have the uh, Inner Sleeve. And uh, lyrics and uh, the custom labels, the Eye of Horus. Absolutely superb album, uh, as you all know. Next up, Black Star Vinyl, Rob. You chose a number one hundred and forty one. And uh, that is, that's an interesting one. This is a 12-inch um, single, and it is the uh, it is Indians by Anthrax, the first single from Among the Living. This is the uh, infamous um, uh, Miss Press. Sorry, um, it's supposed to have Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, and Taint on uh, the back, 
but um, there is only one track on the back and it is Imitation of Life. Um, yeah, so I'm sure when I looked a few years ago, this the 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 mispress didn't seem to be as sought after as the original. But just looking on Discord now, this one does seem to be going for a little bit more. I wouldn't get much for it in this condition. Um, as you can see, the, these little marks appear where I used to have a. Um, there was a little article from Metal Hammer magazine that explained about the mispress and believe it or not it was uh, stapled in there um, the records not the record is a bit marked um, but it's not from uh, certainly not from having uh, those um, staples there because they don't really know where the record is um, but this of course this isn't the the cover that's the inner sleeve the cover was a uh, limited edition uh, poster back. And if you look really carefully, you might see that there's a, a slightly lighter yellow bit here where I had originally written in pencil, imitation of life. I wrote something else above, but I can't make out what it is anymore. Uh, but I'd written imitation of life under there, and at some point I've then tried to rub it out. So this may well be a collector's item mint, but this is uh, nowhere near mint. This just has nostalgia now. And uh, so the poster opens up for like so. And we have lots of uh, cool band pictures. Uh, so back. And uh, let's up and this also used to be on my uh, bedroom wall when I was a teenager, so the corners have kind of got uh, blue tack stains, but uh, there we go. It's a nice piece to have, though. As I say, it's not in the, not in the best condition anymore. Um, Records weren't something I collected back in the day, they were just had music on, although um, most of my records have seemed to have remarkably survived in uh, in good nick, and this one's just showed a little bit of, uh, a little bit of wear, but uh, there we go. Um, there's one more, number 12, and it's going to take me about half an hour, yeah, I'm going to split this in two, which you already know now because you're watching part two. There we go. Um, number 143, at last but not least, uh, in this uh, monster episode is uh, Anarchy in the UK on shaped 7 inch uh, pis, pi, pis, picture disc. Uh, this is the single, of course, from um, So Far So Good, So What? Anarchy in the UK on side A and uh, Liar on side B. Now, Liar is a great track. I love that. But uh, Anarchy in the UK made me not so much. I think I probably bought this um, uh, just because it was a shaped picture disc. I can't think why else. I, I wouldn't necessarily have uh, bought it back in the day. But there we go. So this is what, 1980, 1988 as well. Uh, Capital Records, um, a nice little thing to have. I, I don't think I would uh, play it though. So, also the uh, plastic sleeve it came in is is the uh, original. So yeah, there we go, nice little piece. So that was a bit of a marathon. Uh, 12, 12 records picked by you. Um, I was hoping to do one of these a month, but I just missed uh, April. Um, if you want to see what's uh, left in my pre-BC uh, collection, then do click on the link below. Uh, find uh, an empty square on the uh, the page that comes up. Pick a number, pop it in the comments, and um, I'll tell you what record is associated with it uh, next video and give you and your channel a shout out as well. Links to all the channels I mentioned uh, below, whether they make uh, videos or not. Uh, Please go and check them out. Um, all great people. 
Thanks very much for watching and I will see you again soon.